When I was studying composition, I had the task of creating a 30 seconds piece for percussion. And I was sitting there with my piece of paper and a pencil. I thought, what the hell can I write for percussion? It's, you know, everything has been done in only 30 seconds. So I just started drawing some, some things very, very bored. And suddenly came up with the idea of making that the music and, and drawing something. So I ended up with a 30 seconds piece just drawing myself, a little self-portrait. And I liked the idea and the sound of it so much that I sort of continued the idea and created another movement of 30 seconds, another one, and then layered them on top of each other through creating this loop button. So basically the first movement gets played and I press the loop button up there and then it loops. So, and then I play the second movement that loops as well. And then once I play the fourth movement, you hear all the movements together. Then I also drew London around it. So there's the little gherkin and some houses that all look the same. And here you can see a little bit of air pollution going on. But I was also drawing some little bees. You can see in black and yellow. Uh, my grandfather's a beekeeper, so I was sort of referring to that. And here is some of the sheet music. So if someone wants to sort of copy it, you can just repeat what I've played here. This is the, the final phrase. And on the top left corner, which is important, is the sun. That's one thing, an important thing I learned in my childhood. Whenever you draw a picture, there has to be the sun in the top left corner. So it doesn't matter, whatever you draw, there has to be the sun. And in my case, I also use the sun as a hang and I've been playing this little melody on the hang over there. The first time I saw Hang was in 2003 and at the time, th there was before YouTube, so it was quite interesting getting this instrument. I've never seen anyone play it before, it was just that my, my father heard the sound sample on the website of Pannard, of the makers in Switzerland, and he, uh, he played me the sound sample and it sounded really interesting and so we decided to order a Hang and we got it in the post at the time. So we got the instrument out of a box and we had no no idea how to play it, if you put it on a stand or if you, if you hold it on your lap, if you sit down or play with hands or mallets. It was just kind of just a new, learning a new language, not knowing how to play it. It was just a really interesting process and it also led me into writing music and into composition. to have these sort of new opportunities with playing a, a fresh and young instrument. Just, just learn it by doing it. And at the time I played drums and piano and marimba, so I just, out of my experience, I tried learning how to play it.
Okay, fashion <laughs> name, it's done. When we were studying percussion at the conservatory in Innsbruck, uh, we had the problem that there were not enough, enough marimbas, so we were lots of players, but not enough marimbas. So basically I had the idea of... <laughs> so basically I had the idea of... <laughs> so basically I had the idea of writing a piece for more players than marimba, so there wasn't really enough space. So that was the ideal solution, to have more players on two marimbas. <laughs> <laughs> And the good thing about the pieces is performers always have, I think they've got a good time learning the piece because, you know, you step on each other's toes and it's, it's always kind of good fun when, when you rehearse it. It's not like a, a classical, like a I would say, it's not like a conventional piece. When I go to a concert, I always want to hear or see something new, things that I haven't heard before. And that's also how I try to write music, so sort of to have elements in the music that are different and things that th do things that people haven't heard before. As a child, I used to watch this TV series called One, Two or Three. And there was a thing where, where children had to answer questions and they had to jump around in these three different places and that's similar as we do it on the marimbas and they had to pick the right answer and stand in the right position and then always the light would show them if they are at the right position I always try to sort of think in a performer's point of view and it's, it's great fun for the performers to perform the piece. So when, I think when the performers have fun, that transmits to the audience. I think that sort of causes a positive reaction from the audience when they see that the, the performers enjoy it. What I find amazing about London is basically the whole culture and everything you, you, you get offered from like so many performances and concerts and artists you can see every evening. But also I have to say the weather is amazing in London, you know, you, if you watch out there it's, it's sort of a wrong image. I love the English weather and also the food is amazing. We're going to the string quartet rehearsal now. Um, I'm presenting them a new piece I wrote. 
and it will be quite interesting because they've got no clue what the piece is about. So we'll see what they think. It's definitely four string players involved, but also some sort of visual component to it. And um, I'm not sure if they like it. We'll see. The piece was originally composed for string quartet and dance, so there were two dancers um, who did the choreography to it. But um, we couldn't make that work in the venue, it was just not enough space. So I decided to do something which is really small, but sort of um, bring it on a screen so that it looks big. So I brought these little guys in the back with me and they basically create the, the visual component to it. I do like using sort of non-instruments or unusual sounds in a way, so um, the toys are qu quite cool about this because um, they also have got this sort of random, got this sort of random thing to it because they just run around and do their own thing, so I can't really control them and that makes performing quite interesting and improvised, so they're good fun and create interesting sounds as well. Good, thank you. Nice to see you. So what happens, um, you're, you're playing this piece and I'll be somewhere on the back of the stage. I'm not really visible, I'm maybe behind you or on the side somewhere. And there's a camera on the snare with a live feed to the huge screen. And I've got some basically little wind-up toys that are running around here. So it's, it creates like an ambient sound, but it looks huge on the screen. And what's, what's, ha what's happening is that um, I've been quite into wrestling as a child. And um, there's this tournament called Royal Rumble, where they all go into the ring and Wait, fight. And WWF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, WWF, here we go. And if one falls out of the ring, he's out of the tournament, and at the end there's one left. So basically I've got ten of those, and they're fighting in the ring here, and whoever falls down is lost, so there will be one winner at the end. <laughs> and have you tried it? Does it work? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. They try to, to basically throw each other out of the, of the ring. There's some bigger ones coming up in here. I love their job. A hamster. It's a hamster.
Yeah, most of my gigs that I've done before were sort of where I was in charge of it, were either duo or trio or maybe quintet concerts, but this is quite amazing because there's so many players involved and because of that also lots of people planning involved, so it's it's quite exciting project to be part of and sort of not only part of but also be almost leading in a way, so it's, um, it's not only being a musician and composer, it's also being sort of a production manager and obviously driver. In most cases I do like one or two rehearsals and then do a tour or something and in this case it's a lot of planning and a lot of rehearsals and stuff and then it's only one single concert so it's a bit the other way around and you sort of have to get it right at the one performance so I hope it's going to be a good one. When I got commissioned to write a piece for Hang and String Orchestra, my main concern was sort of the balance between the instruments. How can I make it work to have the Hang, a very quiet instrument with a big body of sound, 20 string players? So I went to a lot of orchestral performances, listened to a lot of pieces, and the more I listened, the more I discovered sort of the sounds around the orchestra. So usually things that that, that shouldn't be there, like the dropping of a mute or the, the slipping of a cello spike, or even the page turns, so players often try to make the page turns very delicate. But I actually like those sounds and I try to incorporate them in a the, in the rhythmic and musical way. So that element of noises, that, that plays a very important role in Concertino Grosso and sort of grows throughout the beginning and the intro and then in the middle there's a whole section where the whole orchestra just plays unwanted noises. Um, with dropping the mute, the sound was great, but could it be less like... No, I'm dropping the mute. <laughs> 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 it, it accidentally happens. Anyway. All the 20 string players get a little solo in the piece, and I was trying to break up the, the hierarchy of an orchestra where only the leaders of a section would get to play the solo part. So I'm coming from a band background where you don't really have that sort of hierarchy and I kind of like breaking that up a little bit. There are loud sections in the piece but also a lot of quiet sections that it's possible for the hung to sort of, you can hear all the detail of the hung so that's why I sort of incorporated the very very quiet noise world of the orchestra. Thank you. 